Hello folks, today we are at Elysia Resort Farm in Koh Samui in southern Thailand. I want to give you a little DIY tip here of how to nutrify your sandy soil. Quite often, many of us, we may live uh, near the coast or even in a desert. And we've got so much sand around, we just don't know what to do with it. So instead of trying to remove all the sand, which is, of course, impossible, the idea that I have is, why don't we put something into the soil uh, that is not too invasive of a technique and not doesn't take too much time, but immediately will fix nitrogen into the soil and nutrify it, and then you could go right ahead and do your planting, hopefully without too much of an incubation period. Now, what we're going to be using is acacia. Acacia trees are found all over the world, in the desert as well as in the tropics. And before we go on about this, let's show you what an acacia tree looks like in this context and why you might want to use these. Here's one example of acacia tree. You see me holding a seed pod here, and I'm looking directly at an acacia. Uh, one very common example here in Thailand, which grows like weeds. Now, why do we want to use acacia for this technique? Acacias are nitrogen fixers which is one of the great salvations of, this, uh, of the future planet. If we take advantage of the nitrogen fixers in the world like this and uh, give them a job, give them something to do, such as nutrifying soil, which is beneficial for our uses, uh, then we have a good chance of taking areas which are otherwise unusable or very difficult to use and putting them straight into into business uh, in one technique you're really off to the races in in starting to create a very nice and useful soil for yourself now what these do these are volunteers and what that means is this is kind of a a crap zone um, there has been uh, all kinds of recent building in all directions around here and then Zones like this get created, which are just piles of junk, piles of, uh, uh, of unusable dirt and uh, throwing away garbage and all kinds of things. And then you get volunteers like the Acacia here. You see how this is thriving here. It's thriving partly due to the fact that there's so many nitrogen fixtures which have rushed on in here, taken the volunteer position and have grown up and have uh, started to nutrify the soil and create very lovely living conditions for all of the neighbors, which are too many to count all around us. Look, find a stand of, of acacia, and hopefully it doesn't belong to anybody. You're out there in a vacant field or one of these crap uh, uh, leftover fields, and then nobody probably will mind. And cut down a bunch of uh, acacia don't cut the tree, don't cut all of the leaves because you'll kill the tree. Cut a lot of the leaves and leave some so the tree can grow and survive. And don't cut um, the stems so large. This is about as big as you want to cut the stem, if you can see that. And take these and um, put them in large bags, bring them back to your property. Just cover, carpet your area. Cover your, your sandy soil that you want to improve. Uh, to a fairly decent depth, about this deep, full of uh, fresh leaves. And then you just simply chop it downward. You don't plow, you don't turn the soil over, because that is major disruption of your soil structure, which, believe me, does exist there, even if it's sand and it's crap. You chop straight down, and just to get these interred into the soil, because then they can impart their their wonderful qualities into this moist sort of a substrate and they can get going on, on breaking down and, and getting the nutrients into the subsoil. So you don't want to disrupt your subsoil, which is going on unless you're just straight sand and there's basically nothing down there. In the case here, we have a very sandy soil, but it has been neutrified because we have very good people here working on the garden. We, we still have very good people here. So it is still, a sand-dominated uh, uh, soil, 
but we're going to improve it vastly with this one step. Now, first of all, before we do this, I always wear gloves when I do any kind of work here that might uh, disrupt the fingers. I get laughed at all over the planet for wearing these things. And, but at the same time, when I've done projects and I've worn gloves, I've had something like this many injuries throughout all of these years, whereas I see bandages walking all around me. Something to think about. Okay, now, we've got here what is called a jop, which is a uh, just a tie hoe, a large kind of a hoe. Very stout tool. This is what I recommend to use. Not shovels. You'll break your back with a shovel. Use this. It's a three-dimensional tool. Very easy. Bob's your uncle. Boom. And now, I want to cut to another job that we're bringing into the picture. This is more normal, a long handled job. I want to tell you why you want to uh, use this one. Uh, now, don't worry that my head's not fully in the picture because you want to see the action of this tool. The way to use this, and this is why I really um, support using this tool here, this big hoe, is that you bring it up over your head and just let the weight of it do all the work. Bingo. So you're in the soil there. And if you want to go ahead and do this technique we're talking about, I'm, hope, I'm hoping I'm in the frame, but you just take and pull back and put some of the green into what you've just dug and it's under the soil. And I'll do it again and again. Now this is very sandy and rocky and it's not easy to chop into. That's precisely why we are doing this technique. So we want to get organic matter into the soil, make it pliable, make it uh, much more usable and friendly for organics and for farming and uh, so that we don't ever have to do this again. This should be a one-time service that we do for the soil and here we're doing it in between the existing planting areas, which used to be walkways. This is all going to be bio-intensively planted organically and biodynamically. But uh, we're using this as one of our techniques to enrich the soil before we get to the point of planting. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be 100% coverage. But the fact that some of the green matter gets put into these little ditches that we create when we chop into the soil and it goes under. The rest is sitting on top as the rains being monsoon right now, the rains will go ahead or the irrigation, the watering will go ahead and bring all of this nutrient down into our sandy substrate. And that's basically the technique. Now something else just for, just for reference, we've got three more tools here. And these are also very handy in the farming. Um, just to give you a little extra uh, for this video. Um, number one is the machete. They call it very many different things over the world, but this is a Thai machete. Um, very sharp, very heavy metal, very heavy gauge. Uh, what we do is do our trimming. This is what we'll use to cut the acacia trees with. This is our cutting knife. And to cut any any uh, structures, um, plant structures that we have around, and even sometimes uh, some lumber that we could chip into the, the farm. We use all kinds of organic material to get, get matter into our soil uh, and uh, to get that, this process going. So first thing here yeah, is the machete. Second thing we've got here is a small version of the hoe. Uh, they, they come in various forms. Sometimes you just get this uh, sharp point, which will just basically make holes. So this here, you could, you could chop all day long into the soil. This is a very handy, very recommended um, tool as well, because it's so much more handy to use this. You use it with one arm and chop all day long and really dice up this soil without turning it over and creating too much disruption. Again, this technique is a one-time shot. You don't want to be doing this every season or every every rotation of crops, but you do want to do it initially to get the condition of your soil right. Okay? So that's the small hoe. 
And here is a post digger or a hole digger. You, and sometimes these come down to a point and just make holes, but these come down straight and then you can make holes for planting. Um, these come in, like I said, very many different forms. Sometimes you just use a hardwood stick and just poke a hole and plant your seed, put your garlic in, whatever you're going right into the soil with. So these are your, your three main, one, two, three, four main allies for doing your farming and for doing this here technique. So here we have Juan and Soso doing the same technique I just described. Juan is on the big job, Soso is on the small job. He's doing the small chopping in front while Juan is doing the big chopping in back and they just kind of form a, a little uh, train going backwards. After they do that, incidentally, they don't, they no longer walk on this here cultivated space that they have just achieved uh, to let the cuts prevail during this uh, monsoon season, uh, which uh, will be giving us a lot of free water in the area. So we'll be getting lots of good free irrigation and which will bring the nutrients down into our sandy substrate to uh, hopefully create that great organic soil that uh, we all uh, yearn for when we're wanting to grow our own food. So I'm glad you were here to, to watch this. I hope this uh, benefits you and is something that you can put into practical use and good luck out there.